Good morning. I'm here in my kitchen and I am excited to share with you Oaxacan lizard painting. Um, Oaxacan uh, is the word that would describe the region that this art comes from in Mexico. Um, this region of Mexico is known for its woodworking and for its bright, vibrant, playful painting that kind of gives animals a look of um, a dreamlike state or movement. Um, I had the opportunity to make this project a few years ago with some students from Milwaukee, and um, I just want to share this little picture of them and their work that they did. So in the center of this picture, we have an example of a Oaxacan painted lizard, and I have some examples of my students' amazing work. Um, and I'd like to show you the basics of how to do this today, but I really encourage you to make it your own. All right, so um, in your kit, you had a lizard cut out. Um, we went ahead and traced it for you so that you would have it ready to go. And I've started cutting mine out. I'm being real careful. Um, I cut the body out first, and now I've kind of left these uh, little lizard fingers to do last. I'm going to go ahead and pause my video again here and give you a second to catch up. So go ahead, use your most steady hands, uh, get those big edges first, and then save those little ones for last. And go ahead and get your little lizard cut out and ready to start painting. And welcome back. Here I have my lizard all cut out, ready to go. Um, I have laid an old sheet of paper down on my table, so I want to protect that. Um, you might want to check in with your adult and find out what they want you to do as far as painting goes. Um, my friends at Shake Rag were able to hook us up with some great little cups of paint in the exact colors we're going to need. However, it is acrylic. Um, it wipes up easy when it is wet, but once it dries, it can stay where it is. So check in with your adult at home. Find out what they'd like you to paint on. Um, any old sheet of paper will do. Maybe you've got a newspaper laying around or a shopper news. Um, I'm going to be working with some similar supplies here at my house. Uh, I use an old piece of Tupperware for my paints, um, but you can just keep yours right in your cups. And I believe you have a purple. I'm gonna let my purple get to the bottom. You've got a blue. You've got a blue. A yellow. pink, a green, and a purple. Now, again, my friends at Shake Rig were so kind as to mix up these colors for you in exactly the right color. Um, they added some white at the bottom of your cup. The great thing about the white that's at the bottom of your cups is it's going to help make your colors nice and thick so that when we're going to do the layering, um, it, it makes them sit on top of each other and really stand out and be bold. So don't worry that there's white at the bottom. You can go ahead with your Q-tips and mix up your colors. Um, now you have you should have six colors. I think I have five here. You have six colors and you have three Q-tips, which means that you have one, two, three, four, five, six different sides to match your six colors. So you wanna be careful when you're working to just dip in one side at a time. Now to start our design, we want to divide our lizard into about five different sections, maybe six. So I'm going to go ahead and make a line from here to here. 
I'm going to make a line from here to here. So I've kind of made two zigzags across. One, two. I'm going to divide the tail on its own. So now I have three, re four regions. One, two, three, four. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to divide it one more time across the head. So one, two, three, four, five different regions. This is going to help us break up our patterns to make our overall lizard more interesting. I'm now going to take a dab and a Q-tip and I'm going to create our burst background colors. So I'm going to just fill in my lizard head with turquoise. I'm going to fill in my first region with green. I'm getting the tiniest little bit of paint on my finger here, but we're not going to worry too much about that because we can wash our hands when we're done. Um, with these little lizard fingers, you want to kind of move from the inside of the finger, working out so it doesn't crumple them up. So I'm going to pause my, my video here give you a chance to fill in your other regions. I'll give you a chance to just fill in those other regions um, and then we'll get on to the next instruction. So I'm gonna pause here again, go ahead, fill in this area, this, this one, this one, and this, and give your lizard a second to dry and be ready to start our next layer. All right, and we're back. So I have my lizard, I divided it into five sections, blue, green, yellow, pink, and purple. Um, I hope you enjoyed picking which ones you wanted to use. We're gonna go ahead and we're going to start putting our layers on. So I'm gonna readjust my camera so you can see it a little better. Now, I hope that you're having a good time working with that tag board and it's staying nice and flat, but if it isn't, don't worry because at the end stage, we're gonna use that to help glue our lizard down on paper to make it sort of look like it's popping off. So again, if it gets a little wrinkled like mine is, don't fret, um, it'll work out in the end. So I'm gonna kind of adjust mine so you can see most of it. Your next step is to add your first layer. And for this one, you wanna pick some areas where you think you might want to maybe put some lines in or another shape to build on top of. So I'm gonna go ahead and I am going to use my pink. Actually, I think I'm gonna use my yellow. I'm gonna use my yellow to put a line over the blue and the purple. And I'm gonna go ahead and put that same style of line here as well. And I think in my purple, or excuse me, in my yellow body section, I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put a triangle there. The more layers you add, the more layers that you add to your lizard, the more complex and interesting the design is going to be. So don't be afraid to go ahead and paint right over the top of one of your areas. Now, I made a little, got a little out of hand in this corner here, but that's no big deal. So I'm just gonna sweep around and cover it up. So I have a yellow line I've added here 
and here, and I've added a purple triangle. And I think I'm going to add one more triangle in my green shoulder area. Right there. All right. Oop, yep. I just went a little crazy. No big deal. No big deal. I can come back and kind of cover that up. Not a problem. Again, we have to be patient with this project or it's just going to get mushy, mushy, mushy. So I'm going to pause my camera. I want you to add some layers. You know what, I'm kind of getting excited about these stripes. I thought I was going to turn my camera off, but I think I'm going to put... a silly one on the tail real quick. Okay, now, now I think I'm ready to turn my camera off, pause, and let you guys catch up. I'm going to give you a second to catch up, and I want you to let your lizard try before we start adding our next bit of details. All right. Welcome back. Looks like we've had an opportunity to get our lizard blocked in and add some, some stripes. And now we've paused and let it dry. Now, right now, it's just kind of looking blah. We got shapes, but we just, it doesn't have that movement or that excitement that our Oaxacan craftspeople would have had in their work. Our next step is going to bring it all together and is kind of the fun part where you get to do your own thing. In your kit, you have a, like a kebab or a skewer stick. Now, the important thing about this um, is it is going to give us an opportunity to make a circle that is this side and a tiny, tiny circle with our pointy edge. Be careful with these, but also go ahead and use them to make art respectfully. We also can obviously make a circle with the end of our Q-tip by making a dab. So at this point, you want to spend some time, and I'm going to stop talking, I'm going to finish my lizard, and that's going to give you the cue to go ahead and finish your lizard as well. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add three different size dots to my lizard using alternating colors, meaning I'm going to put a different color on the blue, let it dry, and then add a third color on top. So I've got my yellow. I'm going to start up here. All right, welcome back. Um, I had to pause there and give myself a moment to do some work, uh, add some layers, and let this dry. Um, a point I wanted to make with the number of times we've stopped recording to add layers and let paint dry. It is very important with this project to be patient. Um, it's so much fun to do your dot, dot, dots, um, but if you keep adding them while the paint is wet, you start to have issues with the paint all mixing together. Um, it starts to look a little sloppy, and you don't get these brilliant patterns and designs. So um, I've had a moment to um, work on the center section for a little bit, and I'm working to get my camera to focus just right, but you can see that I have... Gosh, now I'm almost up to five layers. I have my background yellow. Let's see if I can't get this to focus. Perfect. There we go. I've got my background yellow. Then I added the purple triangle. I've added blue dots. 
more yellow, and then if you look real careful, there's a pink center. So that is going to give us that Oaxacan woodworkers look. Now I had to go ahead and wait several minutes between those steps. So this is kind of a good one. Maybe you want to put some tunes on um, and relax into your work. Now I am using the wooden skewer that is in my kit to do this. And this is going to give me a little end. And then it's also going to give me the larger end. And mine's kind of got purple paint on it now. It, that's going to give us the two different shapes. And then um, I use the Q-tip to make some of the bigger ones. So as you're working on this, just go ahead, maybe grab a little paper towel, wipe off your, your skewer as you go, and just really enjoy layering up those colors. Um, so here I'm going to go ahead and I add some purple centers to these dots at the head here. Um, then I'm going to spend some time I think with, with the little end and I'm going to come across here going to add just some little, tiny little dots. I'll make a couple rows of them. So as you're working, you're probably going to get into a groove. You're going to really enjoy this last step. There is no way to do it wrong. Um, there is no way to do it wrong. You want to just go to town, have a blast. Um, I'm going to flip my camera off for a little bit. I'm going to finish working on my lizard. I want you to finish working on your lizard. And I will flip it back on at the end to show you what I got. And I am really excited for you to come up with something really awesome on your own at home. Hello, welcome back. I hope you guys enjoyed finishing your lizard. I know I finished mine a little bit ago and I'm gonna finish it up by mounting it on the black paper that was in your kit. Um, so I just put some dabs and some regular old glue I had laying around. Um, and I focused on putting a dab on each one of the feet I skipped the head because I want the head to sort of um, pop off the page, but I'm going to turn it around and I'm going to press this one down. I'm going to press this one down, this one and this one. And I'm sort of kind of holding them in place. I'm going to count to 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And then I had a little dot of glue on the back of the tail, which I'm going to use. And I have, if you can see my finger, it goes right under. I have not glued my lizard down completely because I am going to enjoy some air behind it so that it looks like it is truly popping right off this paper and could climb up the refrigerator. So I'm going to finish by taking a little dot of glue at the front of that snoot of that lizard. Now I'm holding it down approximately to the count of 10 again. Kind of using my finger to wipe up the little bits of glue here or there. And here is my completed lizard. Um, I hope you truly enjoyed this project. I've enjoyed baking it along with you. Um, screen to your kitchen. Good luck, and if you have any questions, contact Shake Ray.